Our first speaker is uh, from a large Canadian company, Bombardier Transportation, and um, he's a great guy, um, very interesting guy. I met him a few years ago at our event in Canada, and um, he, 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 we were talking about his presentation, and I think I mentioned this uh, the other day. He said to me, oh, I, I don't have any, any pictures of... Um, of, of readers or tags, is that okay? And I said, I said, no, that's fine. Um, his presentation is is unique in that it's about uh, the process of understanding how the user interacts with the technology and uses the technology, understanding that user experience, so that when you design the solution, uh, it's actually used and does what uh, what it was intended to do, and it's not you know sort of tossed away by the by the end user. So I thought it was a fascinating presentation. I'm confident uh, you will agree. So please join me in welcoming Keith Sheridan. He is the general manager of technology solutions for Bombardier Transportation. Keith. Thank you, Mark. Uh, good morning and, uh, and welcome. Um, I'm a little bit humbled uh, to speak to you today. Um, just in advance of the award winners for the RFID implementations um, and also uh, due to the fact that I'm going to share with you our experience with RFID um, not just as a user but primarily how we're trying to take the technology and create a product um, that is a profitable product that we resell within our industry. So in order for it to be of value I'm going to share with you some of the missteps and some of the failings that we had um, and it's not something uh, that I do very often, um, and I'm sure it's not something that many of you do very often. Um, we're a big company, fairly big company, um, and uh, we're both a user of RFID, and, and like I said, uh, the project I'm going to speak to you about today is where we're using the technology uh, to protect track workers. Um, my background, I'm not a scientist, I'm not an engineer. Um, I, I've run a number of businesses at Bombardier and typically these have been areas where we have to turn a business around or, or create uh, new opportunities and new revenue. And uh, prior to that I was with a bus manufacturer. So my entire career has been working in, for manufacturing companies that, that work in the public transit space. And, um, <clears throat> and, and all of that work has been customer facing and with Bombardier, uh, all of that work has been embedded at customer locations. So I'm rarely in my own office, I'm rarely in a building that's owned by my company. The bulk of my time is actually spent embedded um, at a customer's location, um, working closely with them, obviously. Um, our companies all have unique stories, I'm sure yours is no different. Um, our story and, and our company name comes from the last name of our founder, Joseph Bombardier. And uh, at the age of 15, he invented the snowmobile, uh, which you would know today as Skidoo um, and, and later Sea-Doo products. Um, so innovation uh, has been in our DNA since the outset. Um, his daughter married a gentleman, um, and his name is Laurent Baudouin. And uh, at the age of 26, Mr. Baudouin joined our company as president. And uh, this was the late 60s. Uh, we had one product, and that was Skidoo. And uh, Mr. Baudouin has led our business since 1966, and he has transformed us from a $200 million company in Montreal that builds skidoos uh, to a global enterprise that, uh, that today is the largest manufacturer of passenger rail equipment and uh, third largest in civil aircraft behind Boeing and Airbus. Uh, Learjet is a brand uh, that you're familiar with, I'm sure, um, is a product produced by Bombardier in Wichita. Um, and, and from the rail perspective, which is the group that I'm part of, um, we're, uh, vehicles and, and manufacturing is certainly our core product and, and, and what we're known as. The image that you see there is of a train, a very high-speed train we're building in China uh, for the Chinese market. It's, it's components are supplied and designs from around the world at a number of our facilities. This vehicle does in excess of uh, 360 kilometers per hour. And we're hopeful of more of those opportunities here in the States with uh, President Obama's plan. The group that I'm a part of is what we call services. And uh, globally, it's roughly a billion dollar enterprise. Um, we operate and maintain under contract uh, 8,000 rail vehicles um, globally. 
Uh, here in the United States, we run the commuter rail service in Boston, um, Los Angeles, San Diego, Miami, uh, automated people movers at airports. We, so, so we're not only a manufacturer, but a big part of our business is where uh, we run the operating end of a business. And in, in North America, for a host of reasons, um, there's a limit to how much uh, market share you can get. Primarily, these are what we call legacy transit systems. So in New York City Transit, uh, they operate 8,000 subway cars. The chances of, us coming, of them coming to us or another private contractor to say, uh, why don't you come and, and, and run our rail system for us are, are remote at best. So what, what I did a few years ago is submitted a, a short business plan and suggested that what we do is develop new products and services for what we call those insourced fleets and see if we can generate new products and services and certainly new revenue. Um, and the reason that we, we found it attractive is because for every dollar they spend on a new vehicle, uh, these companies spend eight dollars through the life of that vehicle operating and maintaining it. So we saw it as a great opportunity to grow our business. Uh, there's a host of strategic benefits in doing that. Um, and, and I'm going to show you how RFID sort of was one of our tools in that tool chest in, in creating new products and services. And, and where it started was um, in our industry there's a legacy of for more than a century the track that that train um, rolls on is maintained and has to be visually inspected. So high temperatures impact on track. Every time a train goes by there's a potential for a new defect. So this work, um, it, to this day, it's done largely the same way. There's some level of automation with equipment and, and the like. But every day, these people walk along the track looking for defects, and every day, they're in harm's way. Um, and, and there's a number of fatalities every year uh, around the world. The most recent ones were in Washington, D.C. in early February when two track workers were struck and fatally killed. Um, at 1.45 in the morning by a train, what's called a work train, where it's, it's moving and picking up trash at the stations and things like this. And uh, there was uh, two fatalities in early 07, um, and they were employees of a company that we're a shareholder in. And uh, we started to move on it, and for, for more than simply business reasons, we wanted to solve the problem. So to give you a bit of an idea on um, what's at play here and to sort of visually represent uh, the problem that we were trying to solve. I'm going to show you a short video clip that was produced by a company called Network Rail in the UK. And uh, they have training videos that they post on YouTube, which I think is tremendous. And it's going to be an illustration of, uh, of what goes wrong. Now the video is called Hit or Miss. Even if the person is not struck by the train, uh, the, the traumatic impact that it has on them is significant, so the video shows uh, even when the, the person is not struck, there's an impact. This is just a short clip, and I caution you, uh, you may not pick it up with the English accent, but there's some strong language here. Uh, hello, Mike. Hello, Mike. Hello. Hello. Hey, hey, hello. Paul, you are right. Hey, hey, Paul, you are right. You pull it up. Get a fucking way. Are you Mrs. Peters? Fucking hell. Fucking hell. Okay, so I learned uh, some time ago that it's best to make a significant impact in the first few minutes of a presentation. Um, and I didn't mean to create a somber mood in the room, but uh, it's not about the technology. Um, your tags work, your readers work, um, and, and this is the problem that we're trying to solve. 